Hey again, Doug here from X Frames FPV, and today we've got another build out video for you. And we've talked in the past about, you know, I do two different kinds of builds, and one is where I'm going to spec it for you. You're going to tell me, you know, what kind of flying you want to do, whether it be freestyle or racing or just to have fun and kind of your level experience. And then I'm going to spec it out and give you a list of the components. And the other way is where a customer picks the components that they want and puts them in a in a box and ships them to me and that's what this customer did and it you know for some customers they like that because they get the opportunity to do the shopping and you know do the add to cart and all that stuff and they enjoy that aspect of it so i don't have a problem with it from time to time there are components that don't work well together or work well with a certain frame and will you know do some adjustments and that's not a big deal but this customer knows what he's doing i've already done um, one build just recently for him, which was the Neato 220. That is the um, Dallas frame that was kind of the Jamaican style. And so um, that thing turned out really well. And so we're going to build this one for him. And this is a company that I've not built their frames before. I'm familiar with the company, but I've not actually built them. This is a UK company called Thug Frames. And um, this is called this is their pig six inch. So he wanted a six inch build, and this is their pig six inch. Um, so let's kind of get into the the frame. Um, I did weigh the frame. It's one thirty four grams with all the hardware. So it's a little on the heavy side, but you know, remember it is a six inch frame. So I wouldn't say that that's really too heavy for a six inch frame. I would say that's probably average, and even maybe on the low side of average for some of the six inch frames. The PDB we have here, well, if you've watched my videos, you know I'm going to gripe about it again, which is no voltage regulators. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, you don't need voltage regulators because some of the flight controllers take, you know, straight LiPo power and and some of the, and then the cameras now and the VTXs. Well, this is true. The VTXs and the cameras now, a lot of them take between 7 and 26 volts, which is the case here with the H. This is the TBS Pro HV. But the problem with that is if you run just straight LiPo power, so if you're running a 4-cell, you run your 16-plus volts to that. Over time, with the spikes that you get back through the PDB from the ESCs, you will fry those like, I'm sorry, the VTXs. And so on all of my builds and, you know, all the racers that, that I know, everybody puts the, the camera and the VTX on voltage regulator power. So um, I'd really like at least five volts. Give me at least five volts and then I can, you know, if I need to add 12, I can add it. But that's just a pet peeve of mine. This one, because of how they build it, um, this it's it's a little bit different and it it slides right in that slot so normally i would run maybe an xt60 let's see here and this is going to be the bottom okay so normally i'd run maybe an xt60 pdb um, but i'm not sure that that's going to be at the right point for the cutout so we'll have to just check that out um let's measure up the arms they say they're four millimeter. Make sure it's zeroed out. Zero. Can you see that, guys? Zero. Okay. Three point nine two. And that's pretty normal. Most of the companies that um, they say four millimeter, they're going to fall a little bit below. Some of the companies are right on, but some of them are a little bit below. As far as carbon fiber, really nice quality carbon fiber, and then nice and tight weave. Another thing I'm going to look for in carbon fiber when it comes to a frame is quality of machining. Okay, and we did fall run into some issues. Let me see if maybe this would help you. If you look towards the top, can you see how kind of jagged that is? It's really noticeable on the sides there where those long vertical or these, well, it's not vertical there, but 
uh, these cutouts here, you can really see that it's not very clean. So it's not a huge deal, but it's just something that when I'm looking at quality of frames, it's one thing I look at. So let's get into the components of this build. So being that this is a six inch, we're going to go with a 2100 KV motor. And for this, we've got the Cobra 2206. This is the race edition 2100 KV. Let's get that in focus. And this is a really good, powerful motor, right at about 32 grams as far as weight, which is which is acceptable being it's a 2100 KV and a 2206 motor. So as far as receivers, we've got this is the Spectrum Diversity. This is the FB Racing Receiver. I think it's the 4648. We talked already about the VTX being the TBS Pro HV. This allows me to switch between 20 and 800 milliwatts, which is great. Um, and it's nice and small. As far as cameras, this is the Aero camera, and he opted for the 2.5 lens. And this is a really nice and clean camera. I did want to show you. So as far as the wiring, you know, um, the wiring for OSD on this thing is so simple. And basically, you've got your normal wiring here, which is your video signal, your power, which I'm going to run 5 volts to the camera, and then your ground. And then this wire goes to any of the power positions, so whether it be for your ESCs or, or any other places where you have just straight LiPo power, and that's where, you, where it gets the information for the OSD system. And then when you want to program the thing, you just plug this in, and you can program the OSD. You can put your little name in there if you want to um, or whatever you want to do or change the settings on the camera. So that's great. Uh, as far as LEDs, this customer wanted quite a few LEDs on it. So we've got four running out to the arms with a programmable power distribution board here. So that'll be that'll look really great in the sky. Um, got a real great RC Papa lipo battery strap really nice and tight i don't know if i showed this this they call this the flak jacket and it's for your battery you know this is going to sit underneath right this is how they sit is underneath the um craft and so this allows for some added strength and so that you're not tearing up your batteries and anybody who flies these kind of frames with the batteries underneath will know you know they've got <laughs> the the batteries start looking pretty um, knackered after a while. So uh, as far as antenna, this is the IB Crazy. This is the Airblade, and I really like these antennas. Really durable, really quality antenna. Nice little addition for um, being able to tighten it in the field without a wrench. Uh, as far as flight controllers, well, you guys can tell by looking, this is going to be the KISS flight controller. And... You know, this flight controller, if I'm going to run these KISS ESCs, these are, the, these are the race 24 amp KISS ESCs. Um, if you're going to run these ESCs, run the KISS flight controller uh, because they just work. There's things that you can do together between the two of them and the way they talk to each other that really makes it an, ad, an advantage. Um, but... These are really built well, these KISS flight controllers. I know you, that never did get into focus. I'm still learning my, my camera, guys. But that's going to be about it. So this should be a really good build, plenty of power. Um, I should be able to get a really good tune between these motors. These are really good, nice and smooth Cobra motors. Um and then I'm trying to get it where I'm trying to get it where I use this punch because um, my hands get in there. You know, I'm a big guy, so they kind of get in the way. I don't know if you <laughs> so um, it's sometimes I've just got to learn all this stuff. Right, guys. But um, by the time we get the kiss ESCs in there, the flight controller, get them talking to each other and the motor's really nice and smooth and get everything well balanced, I think this thing's going to handle like it's on rails. So I think my customer is going to be very happy with it, and we'll probably do maybe another second part to this video, or I mean another, do a three-part video series with this, 
kind of do like midpoint to the build and then kind of a wrap up. So guys, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you. You know, we're, we're heading towards a thousand subscribers in, you know, like four months and I'm just, I'm thankful for you. I really am. So hope you're getting something out of them. These videos, please leave any comments or questions in the comment section and you can check out my website at xframesfpv.com. You know, now that it's getting Christmas, it's getting a little bit busy, but I'm going to be doing some videos for Christmas that are kind of going to have some of these smaller, like 80 to 100 millimeter FPV frames that are out now and um, kind of what the some of the better ones are because that's a really good way to get into this sport, into this hobby and so um, look out for that. I'm going to be redoing my motor videos. Um, I got a new thrust bench system that measures much more accurately than the Turnigy. And so we'll kind of be going over that. So again, thanks guys. Hope you're